Hi, Miss Huddle. Hi, Benny. Hi, Miss Sexton. Hi, Benny the Bunny. Are you ready to learn some math? He says yes. Oh, good. Um, so I thought today, Miss Sexton, that I could go back way back in my time machine, and Benny and I could be uh, students of yours today. Great. Thanks. What are we learning? Today we're going to be learning about multiplying larger numbers, Miss Huddle. So we're going to be looking at <laughs> two-digit numbers multiplied by one-digit numbers. Okay, so two-digit numbers by one. Okay, I'm ready to learn. All right. Well, Miss Huddle, first let's think of a situation where we might have to do a multiplication problem like 56 times 5 because I love connecting math to, like, our real lives. Okay, Benny and I... Oh, are you licking the table? Okay, mm -hmm. can you see our star? Mm-hmm. So, Miss Sexton, this is good because let's say that Benny was um, having a hankering for some crickets, okay? Attention, elementary teachers. We are going to have a rainy day pickup this afternoon. If things change, I will make another announcement. But as of right now, we are having rainy day pickup. <laughs> the blooper reel. No, we'll, we'll keep going. Started. No, we'll keep oh, going. Okay. Okay, so sorry about that interruption, Benjamin. So if he was back on his crickets, Ms. Chagru, um, hi, Ms. Chagru, by the way, um, he would be eating <laughs> approximately 56 crickets and f every day for five days. So he had wow. 56 crickets for five days. How many crickets did he eat in five days? That's a lot of crickets each day. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look at that belly. So, all right, so right. can we do that? Is that a good everyday kind of... Great, yeah, so let's right. go ahead and start multiplying 56 times 5 using a place value chart. All right, so I know that my 1s go on this side, mm -hmm. then 10s, mm -hmm. and I, mm, yeah, we are going to need 100s, I we think. We are. Excellent. So we know that 56 times 5 means 56 groups of 5, or we could use the commutative property to make it be... 50, uh, five groups of 56. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start here by drawing five groups of 56. Oh, oh so sorry, Benny. That's um, all right. I scared him. All right, mm -hmm. so 56 has, can you see that, Mr. Girl? Uh, maybe, maybe a little, a little light, darker. A little light. Okay, let's use purple for tens. Even though they're really red with our place value this cool. That's okay, okay, so, um, so five, 10, so mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. I like to draw them in groups of five because that makes it easier for me to count them. So here's six. how many groups of 56 do I have so far, Benny? Um, Benny says you have two, but you need three more groups. Excellent. Benny, look at all those crickets you're gonna have. It's a lot of crickets. I wonder how many total. Now, parents, we are teaching scholars how to draw the place value chart because very it is very important to their foundational understanding of seeing what multiplication is. However, don't worry, we don't expect them to draw a place value chart for every multiplication problem that they encounter. What mm -hmm. I've learned, Miss Sexton, is this is excellent mm -hmm. for knowing which number stays in the ones place and which mm -hmm. number gets carried. Very good. Um, it's going to be... <laughs> I think Benny likes our place value chart. I think He's he loves his closer. hat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, fifty-six, five times. Okay. okay. So now we have fifty-six five times. We just have to figure out what the value is of all of these different crickets. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and start in our ones. See on. In our ones column, we have five groups of six. Okay. You can see them right here. So how many ones is that all together, Miss Huddle? 30. That's 30 ones, right? So but that I can't, can't be. have 30 ones in my ones column, can no, I? No, every time we have 10 ones, we have to mm -hmm. trade out, which is why I like that you have them grouped in five. So mm -hmm. five, 10 needs to be mm -hmm. traded for a 10. Good. So let's go ahead and circle all of our groups of 10. Okay. Um, and then this is another group of 10 because there's five and then five Ooh. more. So we have 30 ones, but that is actually going to be regrouped as three tens. And I'm gonna draw them on top because they aren't part of my five the original of 50, yeah. but they are three ones that I've gotten by regrouping. Mm -hmm. So now that I've regrouped all of these groups of 10, I have zero ones left wow. in the ones column. That makes sense because you traded them all in for tens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now next I want to look at my five groups 
of 50. If I have five groups of 50, I have five groups of five tens. So how many tens do we have, Miss Huddle, just with our five groups of five tens? Mm, 25. Good, we have 25 tens. And then how many? Plus three more, so 25, 26, 27, 28. Good, but can we have 28 in the tens column? No, because each and every time that we have 10 tens, that's a fair trade for 100. Great, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, circling 100. 100. There's another 100. 100. And then not I'm left over with some that aren't 100, so I'm gonna carry, or I'm gonna regroup these into hundreds. the hundreds column Ooh, to make our hundreds green. Oh, so you're getting in the hundreds, hundreds. of crickets. Yep. So now Miss Huddle, how many tens do I have that weren't regrouped as hundreds? You have five and three is eight. Very good. We have eight and how many hundreds and do we have? two hundreds. Great. Two hundreds, eight tens, and zero ones. Factor, factor, product. Our product is 280. Very good. So friends, that is how we understand what we're doing when we multiply larger numbers. Ms. Huddle, which method would you like to learn about next? Well, I've heard some really great things about partial products. Hmm. I think that'd be, that'd be fun. Okay, so partial products, when I'm solving partial products, friends, this is just like using the distributive property. When I'm <laughs> solving using the partial product strategy, let's mm -hmm. write it right here, partial products. I'm basically finding two different products. So here's our problem, 56 Six times five. The first product I'm gonna find is the product of five groups of six, of six ones. So what's five times six? 30. 30, very good. Next, I'm gonna be multiplying by the 10. So I'm gonna be multiplying five. I know this isn't five times five. That's the mistake we sometimes Five times make. 50. It's five times 50. Which is so, 200. Good. That's my other product, 250. Oh my and gosh, now, I love this. I'm going to add those products together. Zero ones, and five, eight tens, and two hundreds. Very good. So using our partial product strategy, I love we that. got the same answer as we got when we were using our place value chart. 280 crickets, Betty! Now, shall we show our scholars the distributive factory fact property? Benjamin and I would like that very yeah, much. Because it's very similar to partial products. It's just <laughs> written in a different way. Yeah. So let's go ahead and show <laughs> our friends the there. distributive property. Okay. We're going to distribute some crickets, Benjamin. So when we use the distributive property, we are breaking apart our multiplication problem just like we did with partial products. We know that 56 times 5 is the same as something plus something. Very good. <laughs> yeah. So we can break 56 apart. My class likes to think of it like this. Yeah. And we draw. We say that 56 is made up of 50 and 6. I like that. So then we can multiply 50 by 5 and six by five. I love that. It is just like our partial products. Mm -hmm. It is, it's just like our partial products. So we already know that 50 times five is 250. Is 250. And we already know that six times five is was 30. 30. Okay. And that together 250 and 200 and 30 is 280 crickets. <laughs> Very good. Now we all we as we were doing it, we compared it to partial products, but we can also compare it to our place value chart because it looks a lot like our place value chart as well. The fifty groups of or the five groups of fifty looks just like the tens column in our place value chart, hmm. and the six groups of the five groups of six looks just like the one the in our place value. I chart. love that. Mm -hmm. Now most moms and dads probably didn't learn the distributed property, partial products, or place value chart. I know I didn't when I was in school. Me neither. What we learned was called the traditional multiplication algorithm. algorithm. So now we want to show you this. To use the algorithm, scholars, you need to make sure you write your problem vertically with the greater number on top and the smaller number <laughs> on the bottom, lining up our tens and our ones. Perfect. Great. So we start the algorithm the same way we've started all the others, but we want to start with our ones. So we want to start by multiplying five times, times six. six. Is 30. And we know that that's 30. But we know we can't put 30 down here. No. We have to think of 30 in terms of its tens 
And it's ones. So ones and tens, so zero ones. Mm -hmm. And then in the tens column, we put a three. Good. We have three tens. That's regrouping. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the tricky part, because some of my friends, we just want to add three and five. But if we look at our place value chart, are we adding three and five? No, that's eight. Yeah. We're adding three tens to five times five tens. Good. So five times five tens, remember, was 20, equal to 25, 25 tens. And then three more was equal to 28 tens. 28 tens. Which is 280. Which is 200. Or 28 tens. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh my goodness, Mrs. Sexton, this is going to, I wish this is the way I learned it back in the day. Now, Benjamin, did you see that? In all, he gets 280. That's a lot of crickets, yeah. Benny. He really likes them. So. Miss Huddle, should we give the scholars some um, problems to practice tonight? Um, I think so because Benny is still hungry. Okay, <laughs> Benny is still hungry. So why don't you give me some problems All right. that we can have our scholars do tonight to practice. What do you think, Miss Shagru? Mm. Oh, that's right. Miss Shagru's voice hurts. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about 35 times 7? Oh, I like Ooh. that one. Yeah. You know, Mr. Sugar, that might be a tricky one. How about oh, actually, six? no, that's okay. We can do it. Because yeah. we know our threes and our fives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't know all our sevens, but we should be able to figure that one out. Okay, Good. you ready? That's another one. Mm. 42 times 4. Ooh, I like how you're writing them different, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Sexton. One more? Um, hey, we have a special friend. Um, do you have a two-digit number, friend? Two uh, digits. 76. Ooh. <laughs> Let's multiply 76 by three. You're my Beautiful. Okay. All right. So these are their challenge problems? These are their challenge problems. Scholars, if you bring these challenge problems in to your teacher tomorrow, you'll get a special... Bonus. High five. <laughs> yeah. And a high five. Yay. All right. Benny, thank now, you. Miss Huddle, do I have to use all of the strategies to solve every problem? Well, that certainly would be scholar-empowered learning, Mrs. Sexton. But what I think would be best would be to try all the strategies in class and then to see which one works best for you. So how about tonight they do whichever they think is is best. Is best. Let's see if they can even extend. Ah, run away from cricket in there. Let's see if they Hi, can cricket. even extend their learning a little bit to try this problem. Whoa. I love it. All right. Well, scholars, we hope you have a great night. Thanks, teachers. Thanks, scholars. Good night.